Good morning and welcome to another video here on P2P Empire. I'm still in Tallinn and today I'm going to visit Reinvest24, which is a smaller crowdfunding platform where you can invest in real estate-backed loans. Most of the loans on Reinvest24 are high-yielding loans from Moldova. And today I'll be spending the day with the CEO learning about how they do their due diligence and risk management. And I will be also visiting one of the rental properties that they have here in Tallinn. This visit is going to be quite interesting for me because there is one issue that I would like to clarify and it concerns the appraisal reports which are often not available on the platform which makes me think how can the investor know that they are funding the project and they are funding the right amount, right? So I'm quite curious about whether they will be able to give me a plausible answer for that and uh, we'll see what they say and I will report to you afterwards. Just a quick disclaimer here. This video is not sponsored. Reinvest24 is not paying me anything for this. It's purely educational. I would like to see how they operate as I'm uh, myself invested on a platform. However, I do pick my loans manually, so I'm not investing into everything. But if you like this type of content and would like to support our project, you can also invite us for a coffee, which we highly appreciate. You can go and buy me a coffee.com slash Empire, where you can support us. All right, so it's about 20 minutes walk to the Reinvest24 office, so let's get going. All right, so we just got to the address of Reinvest24. So it's this building here. I don't have a number, so let's try to get in. All right, so I'm here at the address of Reinvest24, but there is no, no sign of them, no logo, nothing. So let's see if we can figure it out. I tried to call the CEO, but he's not picking up, so. Let's see. I got to have a call with the CEO and they have relocated. They did share the new address in the, in the email, but I didn't see it in the thread. So I thought we are supposed to meet here, but obviously not. He suggested to take a taxi, but weird that they did not publish it on the website, to be honest. Also, when I tried to call their number that's on the website, nobody picked up, so not a good start. Since the new address was a bit further away, I decided to book a Bolt. It's like an Uber in the Baltics, an affordable and efficient way to get around the city. So if you're ever in the Baltics, I highly recommend getting this app. All right, so let's try it a second time. I think uh, this is the building here. It's also one of the buildings that uh, Reinvest24 has funded on their website as a rental property. So I think they have their offices here now. So let's see if you can get in here. They do have a logo up there on that side, but I cannot find the entrance. So I found the number of the CEO, so I'll give him a call and tell him to let us in. It's from the Conjury Street side. Uh, you probably don't know what Conjury Street is, but where the restaurant is. <laughs> Already feel it? Okay, hello from Reinvest24. My name is Victoria and I'm head of marketing at Reinvest24. Right now we are in Cadrioro Plaza, which is one of our rental properties and also the office of Reinvest24. So welcome to our office. Here we are heavy lifting a little bit. <laughs> So yeah, right now it's not so full because of the COVID also and the thing that uh, we are actually working abroad. So we have colleagues in Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia, Germany, Moldova and Spain. But this is our headquarter when we all meet from time to time. And let me show you. This is the space uh, that we are making fun of when uh, our goals are not achieved. This is the punishment room. <laughs> so yeah, but of course I'm kidding because sometimes we are having here some lights and some equipments. So here we have the kitchen, here we have the meeting rooms, because we have a lot of meetings in Zoom and so on. And this is kind of open space office that we have, very open. And uh, here is the financial guys are sitting. Here is our CEO and CTO sitting. And then here we have some meeting room and Alex who, who is making a lead generation for us. And uh, yes, I guess that's it. <laughs> and if you want to meet us uh, in Tallinn, you're always welcome to visit us. 
After a quick office tour, I got to sit down with the CEO and the marketing manager. We talked about the upcoming regulation for crowdfunding platforms and reinvest 24's progress with the financial inspection to become fully compliant. We also discussed reinvest 24's product, which differs from what you can find on other real estate crowdfunding platforms in the Baltics. Our approaches are a lot different than uh, the state grow or crowd estate or traditional way of uh, just lending against the collateral. We want to have all those details about the project, the budgets, the costs. We're also finding ways how to optimize those costs to increase the profit margin. And that's also the main reason why we're able to offer that high interest rate. Other platforms also look at the project's profitability, which I have also learned during my visit to Estate Guru. Tunnel refers to Reinvest24's core business, which is to buy properties from the funds they can raise from the platform, renovate them and sell them or rent them out. That's why they are analyzing the market and looking primarily at the profitability of those development deals. Now you might be wondering how they source their high yielding projects. All right, so here I'm with Tunnel, with the CEO and uh... I was asking him about the risk management process in every country, how they do it. So perhaps you can uh, brief us on that. Yeah, sure. So we have our own uh, presence on the markets where we originate uh, real estate projects. In Spain, we have the most presence in Moldova and uh, in Latvia, uh, we also have a team in place that uh, screens the market, uh, does all the market research, finds the properties, negotiate uh, with the sellers. They basically put together the project, uh, go through all their uh, all the risk aspects and they sent a proposal to us for us to review it and go over it and uh, we're usually quite uh, conservative looking at the numbers so we usually adjust them a bit and uh, find the ways also to optimize them you know with some projects uh, we don't get to the point where we all are in the same page and agree so these projects are usually left behind or left for st later stage to review them later on but uh, this is the process how the projects get uh, to the platform everyone in the risk committee needs to agree. So now that you know how those projects are sourced, we should point out that Reinvest24 has no financial skin in the game, so investors are funding 100% of their real estate property unless the property is bought under the market value. Some of the projects don't have an appraisal report, so I asked Tunnel how investors can evaluate whether the raised funds are the actual funds needed to buy the property. Well, we need to pay that money back first of all, and secondly, I mean, like it's very unprofitable way of doing business because uh, you know the platform is actually and, and the investors are the main asset that, that uh, the company has and if we are going to take advantage of that trust with some projects just to raise I don't know 50,000 more or something then you know the impact for the business is uh, a lot more expensive than that 50k so it's not really worth it if it's worth to do things correctly it's worth worth to complete those projects successfully to make money from that, mm -hmm. from Chiriveria, we're going to make like around 200,000, mm -hmm. you know, that's the profit that we're after. Mm -hmm. And our investors at the end of the day are very satisfied and we can take in four projects like that mm -hmm. and we get them more funded and we can make four times 400, 200,000 again mm -hmm. from that. So just to repeat that process, mm -hmm. that's the, where the profit is, just doing to raise like 100,000 more and then, you know, not being able to pay it back at the end because the asset is just not that, uh, you know, we can't get that much from the sale. For example, the Montesano project where things went a bit wrong and we were late, you know, because of the architect of the municipality. You know, if, if we raised 500k and the, the property is worth 400k, what's our outcome right now? What, what's our options right now? You know? mm -hmm. We would be pretty difficult situation where we could sell it for 400, but we have 500,000 claim plus the interest, maybe 50k. And, and we're like 150k short to make the repayment. Mm -hmm. And for, for what? All that. To, to get that 100k in front and then putting ourselves in a position where, you know, the whole business uh, could lose the trust and the community that we have already, that we've been, you know, working quite hard for and uh, we've been investing uh, quite a lot into that as well. Daniel has a point here. Building a trustworthy brand is hard, especially after the scams in 2020. However, having those constructive discussions is essential as it sheds light on some of the risks that investors should be informed about. So I went even further. Tunnel also teased that the platform will release documents concerning the market research, so investors get more details on the individual deals. From my perspective, I think investors, when they look at the Munich 24, they'll be like, Okay, it's a platform where I can diversify my, let's say, real estate investments in the crowdfunding area, you know. Yeah. But uh, you will probably be compared to like the top players who offer appraisals, who have really structured every single project, 
And then, you know, if people go on the Reels 24 and they have some information, but not in that structured way, they need to be real estate professionals in the local market in order to be able to evaluate the risk, right? Yeah. So if you are not a real estate professional, you will have to rely on Reinvest 24's track record and its ability to deploy your assets in profitable projects. To get more insights into their risk management, I also ask how they deal with country risk. Well, there is uh, no uh, one model that uh, we apply to all the markets. The entering process, I would say, is quite extensive. You know, we have been looking for new markets to expand to since 2018. And, you know, the first, it took us two years to make the first step. We were actually considering Ukraine back then as well. We had some pretty good rental, rental uh, deals that we could get uh, from the Odessa area. But, uh, you know, since the war situation has been ongoing with uh, Ukraine, uh, between Ukraine and Russia so since 2014, then the geopolitical risks uh, were just uh, way too high for us and uh, we, we didn't move to the, that direction. It's a lot easier to monitor the whole process if you have a strong partner on the market that you operate because uh, you see you get uh, daily information about uh, the whole sale process. For example, we know exactly in Moldova how the transactions went. For example, when this war started in March, the transactions of uh, the apartments slowed down quite a lot. Uh, you know, Kirsan has uh, hundreds of apartments on sale. Mm -hmm. In April, it recovered around 70%. And in May, we say it's expected to fully recover. So we get very close, close information from these sources. And we have uh, people who are, like I said, uh, employees in those markets that are screening the market constantly and giving us an overview. You know, it, it reflects uh, from the projects that uh, they're able to bring on the table. You have quite a big part of the, let's say, the portfolio in Moldova. I know, well, depending on the news outlets, but due to the war in Ukraine, at some point, it, it, some of the news outlets suggested that uh, Russia might move on into Europe through Moldova. Was this something that you thought about here at Reno's 24, how, how this risk could materialize? You know, there are so many theories really, uh, and uh, you can't really keep up with everything. But, uh, you know, me media outlets are really interested in the clicks and, uh, you know, this kind of, this kind of like uh, news is something that's uh, interesting and, uh, you know, gets, gets viewers on your page. So they're writing like all kinds of theories. But the reality is like, we estimated already back then when we were entering uh, Moldova. And, uh, you know, I've, I've said it previously as well, these things in Ukraine didn't happen overnight. It was an eight year period that uh, you know, these things escalated and those uh, issues were uh, indicated by Russia. Meanwhile, Russia hasn't indicated any, any issues with Moldova. So these things, I, I don't see them happening overnight. I can't say that this, this is like uh, not possible to happen, mm -hmm. you know, because right now no one really knows what are the next steps for, for Russia and how the Ukraine situation is going to end. You know, might as well be uh, that the Baltics will be attacked or the Scandinavia will be attacked, you know, when Finland and Sweden are moving towards NATO right now. And the World War III could start, you know. So I can't put everything out of the table, but at the same time, you need to work with uh, facts and some, some like, uh, real information. And the life continues, you know, you, you continue your daily operations. Obviously, you pay more attention to some, some aspects, but at the same time, you can't take into consideration every unlikely theory or any scenario that's unlikely to really happen. So right now, we're not taking in new projects in Moldova. We haven't been taking them in for two, two months mm -hmm. since the situation started. But, uh, you know, at the same time, like I said, there, there was some more fear also from Moldova buyers, apartment buyers, mm -hmm. uh, which are not investors, they're home buyers. Mm -hmm. They are people who want to live there. So the transaction slowed down, but uh, in April, the market has recovered very strongly and we see that it's going to be fully recovered in May and it's not going to stop our operations, uh, the situation there. You know, Kyrgyzstan doesn't have any ties with uh, Ukraine or Russia and uh, the construction work uh, continues as usual on the construction sites. And now the transactions are also back up at the level that they were previously. So, so everything uh, continues as normal as, uh, you know, any, uh, until anything like r real changes, mm -hmm. not just some theories. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I've also noticed that your platform has expanded in Switzerland uh, yeah. recently. I think there's one project now currently the third stage maybe. Yeah, it's the last stage of this project being funded. Why Switzerland and what is maybe something that's specific about this market? Switzerland is a kind of safe haven in Europe. It's a very neutral country and uh, it, it's not depending on other areas. It's out of the geopolitical uh, risk area as well. You know, we, we've been wanting to enter there for quite some time. 
uh, but uh, it's just very difficult to, to find and put together projects that uh, can pay high interest as there is quite uh, cheap uh, capital available there and it's actually quite difficult to invest there as a foreigner. But uh, we managed to put everything together and uh, this uh, Switzerland project, it's going to be uh, with a bank uh, involved as well. Bank is going to finance the construction part and our investors going, are going to be on the second uh, rank. But the project is yielding 15 percent plus uh, two percent for in, uh, investments at certain amounts and uh, two owners are going to give us a personal guarantee as well for that loan mm -hmm. so i think it's in terms of the risks and the yield it's very attractive investment opportunity mm -hmm. Why were they able to offer us such high yields? Because basically this is the model that I explained to you earlier as well, where our investors are financing the purchase of the property. Basically this is fully operating property already. There is some room to expand it. And uh, basically our investors are financing the purchase of the property. All the paperwork are already prepared. We already have, uh, the developer already has a verbal agreement from the bank as well to finance the construction works. So once the property is purchased, it will be financed uh, with the cheap money from the bank. But you need to own the property first to, get, to go to the bank and get that loan from the bank. So if we put that in the perspective, like one third is the cost of the property, two thirds is the construction cost. So you get one third of the money with 15% interest, and then you get two thirds of the money, let's say 3% interest rate. Mm -hmm. All together, it comes to around like, what, 7% mm -hmm. around that area. So all together, it's very reasonable. And it's it's very short period project as well. It's only 12 months, mm -hmm. so it's not going to be the funding cost is not going to be as expensive. There is enough margin, and this is uh, you know from the risk management perspective, this is something that we look very uh, deeply into, and it's very important for us to see that there is enough uh, margin in that project. It's not just the collateral value. How did you find this project? It's related to Kirsan still, but it's not uh, directly related to Kirsan. Do you have any other uh, Swiss projects? in the pipeline currently? I wouldn't say that we have something something very specific that I can I can give you some more details about, but we are screening the market. There are some potential projects that we are looking into, but there is still like long process to go before we can say that this is the next project form from Switzerland. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks for your insights. After our extensive discussions in the office, we went for a ride to see all the properties managed by Reinvest24 in Tallinn. The first property we visited was an office space at Roca Almara. It's a rental property that was purchased in 2020. The office came with a tenant and an 8-year-long contract. The property is generating a 6.8% rental yield. Last year, Reinvest24 ordered an appraisal report that was 3% higher in value than the funding target back in 2020. During the visit, Tunnel mentioned that the market for commercial spaces hasn't yet fully recovered to pre-pandemic levels in Tallinn. The platform expects quite some capital growth for the upcoming year as the market is recovering. On the way to see the second property, we have talked about future products that Reinvest24 is planning and its roadmap to onboard institutional investors. Tunnel was also very transparent about the shareholding structure of the company as well as its funding sources and revenue streams. How big is the, is the revenue stream from uh, investors' fees? I know you have a 1% success fee, you have uh, some withdrawal fees, secondary market fee. Yeah, but uh, those withdrawal fees, we don't really get uh, those go, those, yeah, those go directly payment to provider, the payment right? provider. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so we just get the 1% uh, exit fee. Mm -hmm. And secondary market, you know, there are actually quite a lot of uh, transactions there and we get 1% from there as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so if we get like uh, 1.5 million volume per month, uh, we get uh, 15k from the success fee. But you know, it comes at the end. So yeah. it's depending on how many projects and when we're exiting them, it's based on that. Mm -hmm. When we are issuing the loan to one of the Kirsten companies, then uh, you know we, we get the, the fees deducted straight away. So this fee is the, the main source for us uh, to support our daily operations. Mm -hmm. After a short car drive, we arrived at the modern office building in the business center of Tallinn. Reinvest24 owns what in this building? Fifth floor office space, it's around 300 square meters mm -hmm. with our really nice uh, terrace in the backside. And it's rented out to Proxies, it's a company that does political and uh, economical researches for EU government. And last year we also ordered a new appraisal report on that property. It was funded on 2020 at the second part. And the appraisal report came back. I think it was around 5-6% uh, capital growth. But I expect uh, more capital growth from this building, uh, you know, because the overall 
COVID situation impacted the appraisal report as well. Mm -hmm. We did a full renovation. We actually did, we did some uh, changes in the planning of the office as well, based on the demands of the proxies, and uh, they paid some of the costs. And uh, you know, those works also increased the value of that property. Since Reinvest24 also has several rental properties under management, I wondered when the platform will decide to exit an investment. What are the factors that, that you're looking at when considering selling? Because I know investors, they don't know when Reinvest is going to exit property. So maybe you can share some of the factors. Well, I think, first of all, like, quite a lot of work has been done with this property. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, we did uh, replanning of the office space. Uh, we did full construction there, found a very strong tenant there. Mm -hmm. So now the property is renewed. It has a stable cash flow. The parking lots as well are all rented out. And, uh, you know, it's basically that this capital could be freed uh, with a good profit mm -hmm. to do something similar with another project. Mm -hmm. You know, start from the beginning again, mm -hmm. do that process, increase mm -hmm. the value, mm -hmm. create uh, stable cash flow, and there, there is demand for this kind of uh, properties. While the property that we bought didn't have any demand. Mm -hmm. You know, we did some work with it, and, and now we're able to exit it with a profit. It's just, uh, you know, with this property, it's actually that we don't, we feel that there is no point sitting on it. Mm -hmm. You know, nothing is gonna really like, nothing exciting is going to happen to it mm -hmm. from here on. You know, maybe the next appraisal report is gonna be quite good. Mm -hmm. That could be an uh, interesting thing, but at the same time, like why not take something similar and do that process over again and, uh, you know, generate some capital growth for our investors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so that was my visit of Reinvest24 here in Tallinn. Let me now share with you some of my impressions. On a positive aspect, I'm grateful for uh, the CEO to show me around some of the rental properties here in Tallinn, which was quite insightful from my perspective. Also, we have had a, quite a long talk about all the aspects of the platform and the operations. I got to see their office and uh, we also talked about uh, some of the risks. And uh, I raised my question about the appraisal reports, which you could have seen uh, in, uh, previously in the video. For me personally, this is one of the risk factors that I'm considering when investing in US backed loans. And uh, I think that should not be ignored. Let me know what you think about not having appraisal reports and uh, funding a certain uh, uh, real estate projects. Uh, is that important for you or not? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I think that Reinvest24 is uh, a really niche platform where their projects need to fit your investment strategy. So if you want to be exposed in uh, those countries where Reinas24 is offering projects from and you want to earn high yield with elevated risks, it can be a, an option to consider. I think they try to be marketed as like a boutique real estate platform with a slightly different business models than let's say the bigger ones like uh, Estate Guru. So it is quite different. However, of course, with every investment, uh, there are certain risks. We will keep monitoring the platform. I will keep my money invested there. And uh, if you want, to get updated about the latest developments and uh, new features perhaps on Reinas24. Head over to our Reinas24 review on P2P Empire. Also, if you would like to see some of the raw material, we are actually launching a small kind of uh, VIP segment here on this channel for our members who are also supporting us and support our independent work. So if you want to see those type of videos, you can go to buymeacoffee.com slash P2P Empire and become a member. Yeah, so that's been basically my visit here. Tomorrow I'm heading to visit another platform. So if you want to see that kind of content, it's going to be published next Sunday. So make sure to subscribe. Also, if you like this type of content, you would like to see more, hit the like button. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.